Chag Sameach, everyone. We're going to begin with a song, Halachma Anya. It's about the bread of poverty, the matzah that our ancestors ate in Mitzrayim in the land of Egypt. Next year, may we all be free. Chag Sameach. I had hoped to be offering you that greeting in person, looking at each of your faces as we join together in Klein Hall to join together in a community seder. The committee from our sisterhood had worked so hard to create a beautiful Haggadah and to provide us with a wonderful seder, a delicious meal. But alas, as the old Yiddish adage goes, Man tracht und Gott lacht. Man plans and God laughs. And so I would like to publicly recognize and thank the women of sisterhood for all their hard work. They had put in so much effort into a Seder that I hope we will be able to join in with, in together with next Passover. It is ironic that we celebrate our Festival of Freedom tonight in the midst of necessary confinement. We have been enslaved by an invisible tyrant, a pharaoh that has demanded that we keep our distance from each other, and so we sit in our individual homes, connecting with each other through our screens and praying that this plague will pass over us. Perhaps from our circumstances tonight, we can, in some small measure, 
sense what the Israelites must have felt in that distant moment millennia ago when they huddled in their homes and observed the first Passover Seder as that dreadful final plague passed over their homes. So it is that even in this unique and God-willing one-time circumstance, there is something to be learned from this Passover observance. Empathy. Empathy with those who have been forced to observe Passover in circumstances we can barely imagine. Tonight, even as most of us gather in comfortable isolation, perhaps we can have more sensitivity for the incredible hardship of true confinement, of isolation, and enslavement that too many still suffer from today. All, I, all of which I pray will make us more cognizant of the struggles of the disenfranchised, a message that is at the very heart of our Seder observance tonight. As well, perhaps, giving us a heightened appreciation for the community that we are able to join with even in this way as we join here together tonight. So wherever this virtual Haggadah reaches you, I wish you a bruchim habaim. Welcome. May you find blessing in joining us here in this moment. Through the miracle of technology, our Seder table is filled with guests joining us quite literally from around the globe. Our Seder will be led by University Synagogue's clergy and staff and lay leaders each of whom will bring their own wisdom and insights to our Seder tonight. I hope you enjoy. So now let's begin with the kindling of the Festival Lights. Light is the symbol of God's presence in our lives, the divine source of spiritual light and of intellectual enlightenment. It is the light that warms our souls and brightens our paths. As we light these candles, we are reminded that it is most often in each other's presence that God's light, the light of love and support and companionship, shines most brightly. And so as we prepare to light these lights, we invite you to take a moment and to consider those who bring light into your life. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitvotah V'tzivanu Lehadlik Ner Lehadlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu, Vekiyamanu, Vehegianu Lazman Hazel. The word Seder, as many of you know, means order. And there are 15 steps in the Passover Seder journey that we will make tonight. And so I invite you to listen with me as I invite Molly to chant the 15 steps of the Seder for us. Molly? Kadesh Urhats Karpas Yats Magi Dratsa Motsi Matsa Maror Korech Shulchan Orech Tafun Barech Halem Nirza Kadesh is the first step in our Seder. 
it brings us into the holiness of this moment. Kadesh may sound familiar as it is related to the word Kiddush, the blessing we recite in this portion of the Seder. And of course, both words are derived from the word Kodesh, which means to be holy. As we say Kiddush, we bless and sanctify this moment, just as we do when we say Kiddush for so many other sacred times and moments in our lives. Kodesh, our word for holy, carries the meaning of being unique, special, separate, set apart. Indeed, we can all feel especially holy this Passover in our separation. We are set apart at this most unique and unprecedented moment. Unlike Kiddush for Shabbat and festivals, tonight we will recite Kiddush four times, each representing one of God's promises of redemption found in Exodus chapter 6. Vehotzeti, I will free you. Vehitzalti, I will deliver you. Vega'alti, I will redeem you. And Vilakachti, and I will take you. Four times we will raise our Kiddush cups, remembering these promises of redemption given to our ancient ancestors, promises that perhaps have a special resonance tonight as we anticipate our own redemption as well from this moment in which we find ourselves. As we prepare to join together with Cantor Shapiro in reciting this first Kiddush, Sanctifying this moment by setting it apart, I invite you to take a moment to separate and prepare for our Seder. Take a moment to close your eyes and separate yourself from all the concerns that have occupied you, have occupied all of us in recent days. Take a breath and set this moment apart. Enter into the realm of the holy. Take a moment and consider your own sacredness. What is it that sets you apart? What unique gifts can you share with the world? Now, if you need, press pause in order to fill your own cups. And when you're ready, press play again, and we'll join with Cantor Shapiro in blessing this sacred moment. as you ever wanted to know. So I'm going to assume you now know how to wash your hands like a surgeon, and I'm not going to talk about that. The kind of hand washing I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with contagion, 
or for that matter, cleanliness. Rather, Urhats is ritual purification which has many interpretations. One such interpretation is that it symbolically removes from us that which would impair us in our work or distort our vision of the task that lies ahead. I've always thought of it as one of several gestures of freedom. Freedom, of course, being the major theme of this holiday. After the destruction of the temple in 70 CE, the rabbis remodeled the Seder after the Greco-Roman Symposium. At these Hellenic banquets, guests would recline while others poured them wine, washed their hands, and served appetizers and dips before the meal. The guests would then take part in a philosophical debate, after which the meal was served. Sound familiar? My family does hand washing as a communal activity, one helping the other, to remind ourselves that our closest connection with the source of life is through one another. But since my husband and I are sitting at this Seder by ourselves, we'll have to get inventive, and so might you. There's no prayer associated with this act, and there's no rule about how you can do it. So it's up to each of us to decide. You can have one person do it on behalf of everyone, or pass the pitcher and a bowl and a towel around for everyone to do it. Or everyone can just walk over to the sink. It's your call. Carpas, bitter herb, the first stop on the Seder plate. It's a vegetable dipped in salt water. It is said Carpas is supposed to encourage us to ask questions. So let's start at some basic questions. What is Carpas? Well, Carpas is a vegetable or herb. For Seder, many traditions use parsley or celery. However, there are many other options that you might already have in the kitchen too, such as bitter chocolate or carob, eggplant or kale. Hmm. Why does it have to be dipped in salt water? Some say we dip the carpas in salt water to remind ourselves of Joseph, whose brothers sold them into slavery and then dipped the fabulous dream coat into blood to bring back to their father, Jacob. Tonight, we dip the carpas into salt water, and as we taste it, we taste both the fresh celebratory hope and the painful blood and tears that have come with it. Now, please join us in saying the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaAdama. We praise God, ruler of everything, who creates the fruits of the earth. Hi, everyone. We're here to tell you about Yahat, the fourth step in the Passover Seder. Yahat is when you cut the middle matzah in half. That's right, and it's going to be the afikomen. So we're going to take the middle matzah. Dylan, you're our chopper. We take the middle matzah. Chop. And Dylan's going to karate chop it in half, and that's going to be our afikomen. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, okay. Okay. It's so wonderful to be here with you there. And at this time where we're all restricted, having a virtual time together is really the way to go. I want to thank all my colleagues for participating, all my friends for joining in this very, very sweet and important night. The Haggadah is the book. It means the telling of the story. And this section of the Passover Seder is called the Magid. It's the same word. It means tell the story. And in the Haggadah, the Magid is the central core portion. What's the story about? Remember that our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were the main focus of the book of Genesis until they got to Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph. Joseph eventually goes to Egypt, his father Jacob and all his brothers follow, and the book of Exodus begins telling a story that there was a new Pharaoh, and he treated our people severely and in an evil fashion. He enslaved them, and slavery was a horrible, horrible thing. Can you imagine never having the opportunity to do anything that you want, when you want, what you want to do, how you want to do it? In some ways, we're going through that same kind of situation right now where we're all not free. And we hope for the day of freedom when we all can be free to join our family, join our friends, be outside, be in public. When the Jews were enslaved, 
they hoped for freedom. And the very important message of the section of the Haggadah says, Ha Lachma Anya, that the matzah is the bread of affliction, the bread of poverty, the poor bread that our ancestors ate in Egypt. So all they could do was eat this, this matzah, this crumbly, tasteless cracker that somehow becomes an important symbol because it's the symbol of our destiny to go to the land of Israel. Halachma Anya, this is the poor bread our ancestors ate in Egypt, hoping one day to be free in the land of Israel. We hope for all of us that we have a wonderful Passover and we have a chance to have fun with it, to tell a story, sometimes even with props like my little froggy friend here. And of course, everybody needs to be able to have Passover with our dearest of friends, the matzah man. Seder where we wash our hands and we chuckle a little bit at this moment in the Seder because we have been washing our hands multiple times a day for months trying to rid ourselves of germs and this horrific virus that has been going around the world. But whenever we wash our hands, we sing a song, we wash them for 20 seconds. But tonight, tonight we say the blessing. Tonight we say the blessing over the wash of the hands that our ancestors have been doing for thousands of years and that we have been doing. And we, continue, we are going to continue this tradition. We're going to wash our hands tonight and not to rid ourselves of virus, but we're going to wash our hands tonight to connect to our ancestors from days of old. We praise you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who commands us to do the ritual of the washing of the hands. That sounds familiar, but on Passover we also say the blessing of the matzah. Are you ready? Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav B'Tzivanu Al Achilat Matzah. Yum. Do you like matzah? Yes. What are we going to make with our matzah? Matzah brai and matzah ball soup. 
Oh, and matzo ball soup. And matzo sandwiches and matzo pizza. Matzo pizza. Matzo pizza is delicious. What kind of toppings do you think we should use? Mushrooms. Mmm, I like mushrooms. I wonder what your favorite topping is. Matzo, matzo man. He is a matzo man. Show me your matzo. <laughs> this is my matzo. Matzo muscles. No. <laughs> Our ancestors experienced the deep bitterness of slavery and that image the image of the maror i think speaks to us so much during this time when we may be experiencing bitterness in our own lives we may have a hard time being in our own homes and away from people who we love it may be very difficult for us this year not to be able to spend passover with loved ones. And so we experience the maror of Passover in a different way this year than we have in years past. I'm experiencing it in a very different way this year as well because I was not able to procure horseradish this year. So I looked in my refrigerator and I found a few items that I thought might substitute well for the maror. The first one and you can do this at home if you can't find horseradish. Um, you may not happen to have fresh turmeric in your refrigerator, but if you have dried in your cabinet, there's a slight bitter taste to that, so that can work for your maror this year. Um, or you can use a spicy pepper um, to have that bitter or difficult experience on your tongue. Of course, we don't even need to be reminded of the maror in our lives right now. But as we think about this image of maror, of bitterness, and what it means to us in our current situation, we can also think about the maror in our lives at different times, years past, and times to come, and how each opportunity of bitterness in our lives we can see as an obstacle just there for us to sit with, to accept it as it is, to understand that we are in the midst of something bitter and that this too will pass. We can't do anything other than what we're doing right now to change it. Um, so our blessing over the bitterness invites us just to sit with it, just to experience it, to take it into our bodies even with the bitterness that we place on our tongues to say, this is here, this is real, and we experience it together. So we say the blessing, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotav B'tzivanu Al Achilat Maror. We're now at the Korach portion of our Seder, where we eat our Hillel sandwich. On Passover, in the days of the temple in Jerusalem, Rabbi Hillel would eat a sandwich made of the Pesach, the lamb offering, matzah and maror. Now that we no longer bring sacrifices to the temple, our sandwich is only made with maror, or at least the first one. Come have one with me. Luckily, there's a second version, one with both Maror and Haroset. Many Haggadahs say that this sandwich symbolizes life's harmony, that we can only taste the good in life if we also taste the bitter. This sandwich really symbolizes uh, Passover for me personally, and when I eat it each year, I know that we are at Passover. Come have one with me. Haroset, Maror, people's favorite part of the Seder, the Shulchan Arech, or the meal. In my family, we often do parody Seders, where we pick a theme and rewrite some songs to go along with the Seder. We've done reggae, we've done Broadway, rock, and others. 
One of my favorites is our Beatles Seder. Here's a song that we sang before our meal. I'm sure you know the tune. I hope you'll sing along with me. The word should pop up on your screen somewhere. <laughs> Here it goes. It is Here Comes the Food to the tune of Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles. Little darling, it's been a long and thoughtful Seder. Little darling, it seems like years since we've been here. When do we eat? Do, 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 do. When do we eat? Well, I say, I'm hungry. Do, 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 do. Little darling, we thought that it would never end. Long I got up. I've heard enough about the past. Here comes the food, do 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 do. Here comes the food, and I say it's all right, do 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 do. Good day, everyone. Hi, we hope you had a wonderful meal, and now it's time for dessert and to find the Afi Common. Unfortunately, we all can't be together this year to make the house a disaster while we're looking for it. So I've hidden the Afikomen in the next few images. Have some fun! Baruch Atah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hazan Et HaOlam Kulo Betuba Be'echem Be'eches Adiv Rachamim Hu Noten Lechem Lechol Basar Ki Le'olam Chasto Hu Tuvo Hagato Tamid Lo Chasar Lanu Ve'ol Yichsar Lanu Mazon Le'olam Ba'ed Babur Shem Lo Hagato Kiluzanu Farnes la ko, Umeti la ko, Umechin mazon, Leho briatav asher bara, Barucha ta adonai, Hazan et ako. Kakatu beachata, Besavata uberata, Et adonai lecha, Ala arta to vasher natam lach, Barucha ta adonai. Aha Aretz ve'alha Mazon U'v'nei Yerushalayim Ir HaKodesh b'mera ve'yameinu Baruch atah Adonai Bo'ne v'rachamav Yerushalayim Amen Ha-rachaman V'imloch alenu le'olam ba'et Ha-rachaman V'yiparach b'shamayim u'v'aretz Ha-rachaman V'yishlach lanu b'racham ru'a b'bayit hazeh Belshukhanze shelchanu alav. Oh, se shalom bimarmah, 
Chag Sameach. The Hallel, the section of the uh, Haggadah that we're about to do now, comes to us from Psalms 113 through 118. But on Passover, it's a little bit different. We actually divide the Hallel into two parts. So right before the meal, we have the Hallel. Why do we do this? It's a praise to God. It says in the Magid section of the Haggadah, in every generation, behold dor vador, in every individual should feel as if they're personally redeemed from Egypt. For it was not only our ancestors whom God redeemed, but it was us who was redeemed with them. And therefore we must revere, adore, glorify, and praise the one who performed all these miracles for our ancestors and for us. And so what happens is this is a praise. We are praising God for this redemption. We're gonna sing a song, it's a, a folk melody called Hallelujah, and it's based on Psalm 113. you have found this virtual journey through the Seder both enlightening and entertaining. I hope that it has been, at least for a little while, a bit of respite and escape from the realities that we are all dealing with. And I want to thank the members of our staff and clergy and leadership who participated in the creation of this virtual Haggadah. They each are a source of light and wisdom and blessing for me and for our entire community. And so now we come to the end of our Seder. We conclude with a simple phrase, L'shana haba'a Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Simple words, but not such a simple meaning. You see, these words are not so much a literal wish, although that would indeed be nice to actually spend Passover next year in Jerusalem. Rather, these words are an aspiration, a messianic aspiration. We read in the second chapter of the book of Isaiah, it shall come to pass in the end of days that the eternal's house shall be established at the top of the mountain and all the nations shall flow to it. 
Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to God's mountain, to the house of Jacob, and we will learn God's way and walk in God's path. Ki mitzion teitzei Torah udvar Adonai mi Yerushalayim. For out of Zion shall come Torah, Adonai's word from Jerusalem. You see, we conclude our Seder with an expression of hope. A hope that next year we will see the ultimate freedom of messianic times. Times envisioned by Isaiah as when all the nations will come together in Jerusalem, the Shanaha Ba'ab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. This vision underlies so much of what we have done throughout the Seder. Four glasses of wine, recalling God's four promises of redemption. A redemption, a redemption we pray the Shana Haba'ab Yerushalayim will be realized by all people. We have prayed that all the brokenness of the world, symbolized by that Afikoman, will be repaired next year in Jerusalem. And that Elijah will indeed arrive next year in Jerusalem to announce the coming of messianic times. Next year, may all the nations flow up to Jerusalem in solidarity and in peace. And as we end, we affirm our commitment to all we have enacted through these words and actions and rituals and symbols of our Seder, to partner with God in making that vision a reality, because it will not simply happen. We must each make it so by doing what we can to repair our own little corner of the world. And so we say, L'Shana Haba'a B'Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. And to that we add, L'Shana Haba'a Brentwood, California, next year in Brentwood, in our communal home, in full strength and health. And to that, we say, May it be God's will. Amen. Wishing everyone a wonderful Passover. We're going to close with the traditional words of L'Shana Haba'a B'Yerushalayim. And we usually say, uh, next year in Jerusalem. This year we say it again, but maybe with a different meaning to those words. Yerushalayim means a place, but it can also mean a city of wholeness. So let's turn our hearts toward a time when all of our cities will feel whole again. Mm -hmm.